What would be some goals for an abuser? If you had a person in therapy that is an abuser and you either recognize that or the person comes to you and asks you how to stop abusing, I've actually had people email me recently and sends, put some comments on some videos asking me, how can I stop being abusive? I love getting that question. The first thing that you have to overcome in changing any kind of behavior is denial that you're doing it. So first, the awareness that you are doing it. And second, the willingness and the desire to stop is absolutely essential. And that gives you a very good prognosis. So what would be some therapy goals for an abuser? The first thing is you have to identify the beliefs that are underlying the abuse. And this is often the one that is missing from therapy, also from a lot of the state-run programs that are offered to people that are abusers or who have a domestic violence charge against them when they're sent to these domestic violence programs or to where they're supposed to be learning about you know, not being abusive, you've got to look at the beliefs. If you don't change your beliefs, you're going to continue to be abusive because you're going to continue to believe that you have a right to be abusive. So what are some of those beliefs? Well, the most important one is I have a right to be abusive. I have a right to control people. I have a right to control a person that I'm in an intimate relationship with. I have a right to control my wife. I have a right to control my husband. I have a right to control my children. I have a right to control my elderly parent. I have a right to control my workers. People have to do what I want them to do. My wife has to do what I want. My wife has to meet my needs. My wife has to meet my demands. My girlfriend has to do everything I tell her. I, women have to believe, women have to obey men. Men own women. I own you. You have to do what I say. I have power over you. I can, I can tell you when to jump and tell you how high. I mean, what beliefs are undergirding this? You gotta be honest, you gotta be vulnerable. You gotta look at yourself and, and look at those beliefs and be willing to say, oh, I, I believe that. That's, a, that's something that I've, my father believed that. And I saw that modeled. You know, I saw abuse in my environment with my mother. Um, abusers, people who have been abused either become victims or abusers, often, not all the time, but often. So, or people that have seen abuse say, I'm never going to be abused, never going to be abused like my mom. I'm not going to be an abuser like my dad was with my brother and with me. And then often find themselves either going into an abusive relationship or becoming abusive doing the exact thing that they said they would never do. It's just part of how we're wired when we've learned behavior. So what are those beliefs? What you've got to identify belief, what you have a right to. Belief is what guides your behavior. It's undergirding your behavior. It gives you your script that you follow. And as long as you have that belief in your mind, if you have a belief about women, that women are uh, weak or that women don't have a right to say no, or that women don't have a right to stand up to you, or that children don't have a right to say no, or that children uh, have to obey you, or children should be seen and not heard, whatever it is that guides your beliefs, that sets you up to be anything other than healthy, anything other than uh, cooperating and sharing power and having goodwill toward the other person and, and giving, treating the person cur with courtesy and with dignity and, and not demanding that your needs be met. The next thing you have to do is you have to identify the behaviors. What do you do that's abusive? 
And I don't mean just, I don't just like say, I don't treat her right. I mean, you can start there, but then you've got to get very specific. What are they? And in order to do that, you're either going to have to work with somebody that tells you what those behaviors are that helps you identify them, or you're going to have to listen to the person that you're abusing, tell you what you do, which is kind of painful and hard, but to tell you, you know, you put me down. You shoot down every single idea that I give you. You demand that I do things and you don't take no for an answer. You don't let me explain myself. You don't let me participate in decisions. You tell me I'm wrong and my feelings are wrong when I try to tell you how I feel. You tell me that's stupid. You tell me that I shouldn't feel that way. You tell me that, that I don't feel that way. You tell me what I feel. You tell me what I think. You tell me what my motives are, which you can't possibly know. You tell me what I'm supposed to think and who, what I'm supposed to be. You don't listen to me. Okay, you've got to hear that or you've got to hear you're, you've, you've got a mindset of hostile anger toward me or you undermine me. You, when I say something with the kids, you come in and, and you tell the kids, you don't have to listen to her. You don't have to listen to him. You can do anything you want. Listen to me instead. That's undermining. You're discounting me and you're putting me down. You're ridiculing me. You're making fun of me. You're telling jokes at my expense. You're making me feel like I'm this small. You've got to literally listen to this person tell you, you know, you're playing mind games with me. You're twisting my words. You're, you're like doing all of these things that are, are making it out. Like, like I'm the one that's making things up and gaslighting, but it's really you. You're the one that's getting, trying to get me to doubt myself, or you're denying that you did something. You said something, and I know you said it, and now you're denying that you said it. You're telling me that didn't happen, or you're lying to me. Okay, you've got to be able to hear this person tell you. That's hard, really hard, especially if your heart is open and you're allowing yourself to feel the pain that someone else feels when you're discounting and you're, or you're abusing them or mistreating them. If you actually are open to that pain, it hurts. And it's really easy in these times to get defensive. You can say to the person, this is healthy. I need to take a break. I'll have to come back to this. That's a healthy thing to say, but getting defensive, getting angry, turning it around and blaming it on the other person, denying that you do it. All of that is back in your old pattern. So you got to identify the behaviors. You might also need to get a book on why people abuse. You might need to get a book on specific abuse tactics. Um, both of those are really helpful. One of the ones I like and men aren't the only ones that abuse, okay? Women can be abusive too. And there are men that are abused in abusive relationships with women. There are grandmothers, mothers, sisters, daughters, wives, girlfriends that are abusive. So I don't want you to think if I'm using a pronoun, it's just really awkward to keep switching back and forth. Uh, so, but some of the books that I really, really like that would help you to do this is um, Lundy Bancroft has a good website and he talks about what you have to do to change. It's just lundybancroft.com. And um, his, he's got a book that talks about why does he do that? And it gives you all the beliefs underlying abuse. And then uh, Patricia Evans book on the verbally abusive relationship lists specifically all of the tactics that emotional and verbal uh, emotional and verbal abusers use that cause pain with the victim and those are a lot of the things that i just listed uh, the next one is that you have to own the behaviors and the beliefs you got to own a meaning you say yes i do those things i believe those things yes I do those things. If you don't own them, if you continue to deny that you do them and that they're there, that they're your behaviors and your beliefs, you will not change. Okay. So that defensiveness that you have, that we all have, 
has to be dropped. You got to keep that defensiveness down. Then you got to change the beliefs. You got to substitute them. Basically, uh uh, I don't have a right to control anyone. I have shared, I need to have shared power in a relationship. I need to have shared cooperation. I need to have goodwill toward the person and the relationship. What that means is that I don't want to hurt the other person. I'm not willing to do anything that hurts the other person. And if I find out I have done something that hurts them, I'm going to be immediately repentant and I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to want to change. Okay. That's goodwill. You have to own them. Then you have to change the beliefs, like I said, to something else replace it with something healthy then change the behaviors first change the beliefs then change the behaviors behaviors meaning instead of ridiculing what do i do instead of ridiculing you i listen to you instead of minimizing you i listen and i value you i i take what you're saying just straight. I don't make it bigger. I don't make it smaller. I just hear you. Okay. And I accept what you're saying, according to how important you say it is. I don't make fun of you. I don't call your names. I don't undermine you. I validate you when you tell me that something hurts. I tell you, I'm sorry, that was hurtful. I can see that that was hurtful. I can see that you're upset. You, I don't tell you what your motives are. So you change the behaviors, you change them to something else and you change them, whatever it takes. I don't care how hard you have to work. I don't care how long. And usually, honestly, uh, David Hawkins at the Marriage Recovery Center, he says it takes up to two to three years to really change abusive patterns, two to three years of work. So you're going to have to put some time into this. You're going to have to put effort into it, probably going to need therapy. And, uh, but if you want to change, it's worth it because what you have is dysfunctional, unhealthy, painful relationships where you're not having an open, vulnerable, intimate relationship. You're just having a power over relationship, or you can have healthy, intimate, good relationships it's worth the change. Then you've got to recognize your slips. When you slip, you got to say, I'm sorry, I just discounted you. Or if the person says to you, hey, you just discounted me again. I don't like that. You promised not to do that. Then you've got to be accountable. I'm sorry, I did. You're right. I will continue to work on it. I will make that up to you. I will work even harder on that and mean it. Repenting of the slips and recommitting to change, doing whatever it takes to make sure that the new beliefs and the new behaviors are your new normal and that you are no longer abusive. That is what it takes. That is the plan for a therapist who has a client in their office that is abusive. That is not something that's done quickly. It's something that takes a very long time. It's not recommended that people are, uh, that a client, that you, therapist works with a couple when there's abusive behavior, because just by having the couple in there, you are giving validity to the behavior and the complaints uh, of the abuser, which is re-traumatizing the abuse victim. So uh, I've got other videos on that if you want to listen to that. So this is basically the steps that an abuser needs to take to change. So if you are trying to change, I've got some more resources I could refer you to, and you're welcome to write me at Carla at changemyrelationship.com and take my classes. They're not specifically to help people to not be abusive, but they definitely help you with um, dysfunctional relationships, dysfunctional behavior, dysfunctional patterns, and learning how to be healthy. So uh, thank you for watching this video. And I hope you'll come back and watch more. And I'd love to hear from you.